Yo, 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 what up, everybody, man? It's your boy, Darnell, and I want to welcome you to an episode of AZ Inform You Podcast. This is Rodeo Time. As of May 1st, we are dropping nothing but rodeo shows, and today's guest is a cowgirl doing her thing. Please let the people know who you are. <laughs> um, my name is Charlie Teasley. They call me Ellie Mae at the Ranch. Why they call you Ellie Mae at the Ranch? So I'm kind of the tomboy around the ranch. So they named me Ellie Mae after the, who, what is that girl? She's on Beverly Hill. Is it Beverly Hill Billies? I think it's Beverly Hill Billies. I could have the episode wrong, but I'm named after her because I'm rough, tough. I'm a tomboy. I do what I want when I want. I'm a free spirit. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool, cool. So what, uh, what ranch are you at? I'm at a lot of them. Okay. So I'm at, um, one of my borders is Mr. Pete. I'm at his ranch. And then I go over to the night ranch. And then I go over to, we like to call it the boom boom ranch. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, sometimes I go to other people's ranches too. I just like to get the experience in all aspects, you know? Okay. Everywhere. Okay. I dig. So wh what got you into rodeo? What got you into horses and all that? Um, let's see. So honestly, my Yaya, which is grandma, uh, she was a rodeo queen. So on my mom's side, which is kind of just like is in my blood, I guess you can say. Um, I did used to do Girl Scout camps when I was younger and I would take like these two week courses of just riding horses. But it wasn't the same, like, compared to how I ride now, it wasn't the same as just, like, horses taking the same trail a thousand times. And then I bumped into somebody when I got older, started going out to Old Town, I bumped into somebody who um, rode horses. And we were just sitting in the club, and he showed me these videos of him riding horses. I was like, oh my god, I want to ride horses. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was one of those girls, right, okay. in the middle of Old Town. I said, I want to ride horses. For real, I want to ride horses, so I started going out to the ranch, and that was like three years ago. Okay, so are you from here? Yes. Oh, born and raised. Arizona native, okay? okay. on the playground is where you spend most of my day. Okay. Shout out to Fresh Prince, okay. Okay. So, now, what keeps you in, what keeps you doing what you're doing? Because I know for a while you stopped, right? Right. So, I started riding three years ago. Started drinking, partying. I was just like, didn't have a horse, didn't like, you know, so it wasn't like I was riding every time I was out at the ranch. So, um, stopped coming around, then the pandemic hit a year ago. And I was just like, I miss going to the ranch. So I, um, hit up one of my friends who had his ranch during that time. And I just started coming around. And I was like, I like being around horses. Like, I liked working with them. It was kind of therapeutic for me. It got me out of the house. I like being outside. So, and now I'm hooked. I bought my first horse some months after that. And I'm almost I'm two horses deep now, I think. <laughs> so, yep. This okay. is where I'm at now. Okay. Okay. Which is exciting, man. So, uh, walk us through a day to day process when it comes down. No, actually, before we go into that, before we go into that, um, when the pandemic hit, how did the ranch operate? Like, was it still open? Were you guys able to go to it? Like, how did it, how did they operate? Um, ranch life is ranch life, no matter what's going on in the world. You, whether it's and every season too. Mm. She was cold outside, hot outside, 115 degree weather. We're we're outside. Oh, wow. <laughs> so ranch life does not stop. Pandemic did not stop ranch life at all. So, but was there like a limit of you guys that can come to the ranch or? Um, no, I mean at the ranch I was at during the time when the pandemic was big, um, there was only like really three or four of us okay. that really came out. So there wasn't really like a big crowd of us compared to the ranches I'm involved with and go to now. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't tell you how it was for them during that time. Okay. Okay. So how was it for you? Were you kind of shook in? Were you kind of like, oh, I don't want to go around the horses. I just want to stay inside. Like, how was it? Mm, no, I was ready to go outside. <laughs> I mean, and during that time, I was... I would ride anything. So okay. I was a ranch hand. So anything to get me out of the house was therapeutic for me. 
and I rode any horse they would put me on. Okay. Whether it was broken down, green broken, not broke at all. Like, I was like, I just want to ride, so just put me on any horse. So explain this, this. I'm not a cowboy. I mean, I'm, I find horses very therapeutic to me. Like I can go out to yeah. a ranch and I can just hang with horses and just pet them and whatever. And it just, it's just relaxing. You don't right. ever know what a horse goes through, but mm-hmm. for you, it's just like very therapeutic. So, uh, what it, all those terms that you said, broken, green, broken, whatever, whatever, whatever. Oh, like, okay. Okay. Can you break down those terms for the people that don't know what that means? Okay. So a broken horse is basically what people are used to. Um, you could ride the horse, stand next the horse is just going to stand there. It's basically a horse that's used to human interaction. You can ride it, you can turn it, you can make it do whatever when you're on it. That's a broken down horse. Okay. Um, a green broke horse is basically a horse that knows what it's supposed to do, but it has a lot, like it has bad habits okay. that you got to stop. Like the horse could... I mean, simple things that we deal with on a regular basis. Horse doesn't want to go down the driveway. Okay. A uh, horse likes to um, back up when it doesn't feel like going. Like, for instance, like when we go to Jim Canna events, the horse is backing up, doesn't want to shoot out of the arena. Or let's say a uh, horse kicks. You know, there's just bad habits that horses have. My horse, when I first got her, she wouldn't stand still when you got on her. So she literally is, like, spitting you in a circle and your foot's in the stirrup. <laughs> Next thing you know, your foot's caught. <laughs> but, yeah, like, certain things, like, green broke bad habits. Okay, so what's the name of your horse? Zara. And what type of horse is it? She's a Tennessee walker. Tennessee walker. Mm-hmm. All right, so I don't know... I'm very green when it comes down to the names. <laughs> I just see horses. I'm like, oh, that's a beautiful horse. But I never yep. know, like, the names of, like, I can yeah. look at a blue nose pit dog. I'm like, okay, that's a blue nose pit, but I'm not. So mm-hmm. how did you become so intelligent when it came down to the breed of a horse? So, to be honest, that took me a long time to get down. <laughs> <laughs> I would just look at a horse and be like, oh, okay, that's a horse, mm-hmm. you know? What? What breed is it? Like, <laughs> I'm like, it's a brown horse, Soro Charlie, or what? I probably still don't even say it. And I'm like, oh, it's a, it's a dark brown horse. It's a black horse. That's a bay horse, Charlie. Okay, <laughs> like you know, there's like so many different terminologies for horses and stuff. So it took me a long time to get in the groove of it. Um, still to this day, I kind of struggle with like horse breeds. Okay, but I mean, the way I started. I only knew the difference. There was a gated horse. You're going to have a Cadillac ride. Well, there's a non-gated horse, which is more of a bumpy ride. Right. So that's all I knew when I first started. So how long did it take you to kind of start naming the breeds of the horses? Um, I just started probably, like, getting in the groove of, like, looking at horses and... Like, I joined a bunch of Facebook pages, and I was, like, looking at ho- – like, I look at horses every day. Mm-hmm. Like, literally every day. I'm, like, looking at horse stuff. So, I think when I started selling people's horses and, like, helping sell them and then look online for other horse options, because, you know, I got kind of curious. I like to run. Mm-hmm. So, um, gated horses aren't supposed to run, fun fact. They're <laughs> supposed to walk cute and smoothly. And um, have a smooth pace. So I like to run horses. Okay. So I started looking at other horses. I was like, I want a horse that runs. So just being on those pages and looking at horses that run and the different breeds like quarter horses. I mean, Appaloosa, uh, OTTB, Thoroughbreds. Like you catch on to it when you like see it all the time. Okay. So and wow. do your own research i guess because shoot you naming off still don't know <laughs> yeah. i still don't i still don't know man but that, that's pretty dope so this is going to be your first rodeo riding in right yes so what are you doing in this rodeo that people can look forward to seeing you do so in this rodeo i'm going to be running barrels okay i'm not a professional <laughs> i just want to disclosure i'm not a professional uh barrel racer or anything like that um I just got into barrels some months ago because mm-hmm. it sparked my interest. Um, so I've been practicing. 
I've been riding this little horse named Cinnamon. She's a Palomino, so you'll see me and Cinnamon um, running in the rodeo this okay. year. Okay, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, excited, I'm excited, too. So, so walk us through this barrel racing. Walk us through a whole thing, because people, pe- people are probably like, barrel racing? Like, are you guys going to be putting barrels on them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, are you yeah. Guys, like, put, I know what barrel racing is, but walk people through, you know, how to train for barrel racing, how to train your horse, how to get ready for it, and then... Mm-hmm. How do you, is there qualifications? Mm -hmm. Like, just walk everybody through that whole process. So, like I said, I'm still a beginner, so professionals probably can dumb it down to, like, the nitty-gritty. I'm going to just do the basics. So, with barrel racing, first of all, you got to have a quarter horse. Okay. Best horse to run barrels on. Um got to learn how to sit in the saddle because <laughs> these horses are going fast. This okay. isn't like a horse just trotting or loping around some barrels. You got to learn how to sit in the saddle. You got to be confident. You got to have that bond, that relationship with your horse and that trust. Um, I've been, you know, practicing around at the ranch in the arena, um, just navigating through the barrels, doing the pattern. Recently, I've been doing progressive events, mm-hmm. um, just opening up cinnamon and, you know, recording myself looking at my mistakes you know hand placement's important how you sit in the saddle you know your horse's body language your body language all that stuff takes part with barrel racing are you nervous yeah i am because (laughs) (laughs) like i said we talked about this before Mm -hmm. (laughs) i lean too much (laughs) so me and her talked about this a little bit ago where this lady, she came out the, she came out the thing, and and she leaned yeah. too much, and what happened is the horse ended up falling on her. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she broke something. It's none of my business. I hope she's okay. But it right. was like when she first told me this, I was like, man, I don't lean too much. Don't come out too <laughs> hot, man. Don't come out too hot. Yeah. But that's incredible, man. I'm excited to see you on uh on that horse going around the barrel. So is that the yeah. only thing you're doing, or are you riding in? Um, yeah, that's the only thing I'm doing. I might do the grand entry with cinnamon too, but other than that, I'm just going to run the barrels. Not looking like, not trying to win mostly. Like I'm not out here like, oh, I need the money. I need the money. Mostly doing it for the experience. I love it. I love it. So uh, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, if somebody wanted to talk to you, somebody wanted to catch up with you, if somebody wanted to just learn from you, how would they be able to get a hold of you? Ooh. Well, I tell a lot of people catch me at the ranch. I mean, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, I'm on social media. You know, my name's Charlie Teasley. The only black cowgirl named Charlie Teasley in Arizona. <laughs> it's not okay. going to be hard to find me. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm on Instagram. But I also do horse lessons. Um, oh, okay. okay. I help. I help my friends out, uh, Ray and JT. They have a, a riding company or a riding horse lesson business called Double J Riding. Okay. So that's another way if you wanted to get more in tune with horses and work one-on-one with me. That's another way people can reach out to me mm. and schedule a horse lesson. I love it. I love <clears throat> it. So do you have a website? Yes. It's DoubleJRiding.com. Okay. And you can let them know that you want me to be the one <laughs> to do the horse <laughs> and, lesson. And what, what's the typical amount? Uh, what's what's the charge to do to to learn how to ride? Fifty bucks an hour. And how long do you guys usually do? Um, an hour. An hour? Yeah, fifty bucks an hour. But yeah, fifty bucks an hour. Okay. I mean, it also depends like what kind of lesson you're trying to do. Are you trying to just come, you know, pet on a horse? Like everybody's motives for horse lessons are different. I'm actually learning that since I've been working close with like kids. Mm-hmm. I've worked with adults lately. I've worked with, like, little kids, little, little, like, not, like, toddlers. So everybody's motive's different. You kind of figure that out, okay. each person that comes in. And how old are you? I'm 25. You're 25 and doing it big, man. Listen, if all my 25-year-olds, <laughs> all my young ladies out there that want to do it big, I promise you, man, this is an inspiration. Well, look, 
Miss Charlie T. I appreciate you coming on uh, <laughs> on our rodeo edition of AZ Inform You. Right. Listen, man, y'all can listen for us every week, man, on the same channel, on every platform. We are out here. And also, me and Charlie have a show called uh, DC. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> where we'll be talking about everything, man, kind of yeah. getting into concepts of relationships from, so I'm 34, she's 25. So we, I mean, yeah. we're still kind in that same age range a little bit you know what i mean mm-hmm. but uh the concepts the <laughs> situations what we went through <clears> is the same so i need y'all to catch us every wednesday with dc mm-hmm. we'll be dropping rodeo shows every week all week yep. it's coming to you guys so again charlie i appreciate you so much coming out and chopping Thanks. it up with us on this late night <laughs> <laughs> No problem. I look forward to seeing everybody at the rodeo. Hey, May 15th, it's going down. There's two shows, 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock. It's out there at where, Charlie? Westworld in Scottsdale. And if you don't know where that is, please Google it because it'll tell you to, I don't know the direct (laughs) address to it. Or they can visit ArizonaBlackRodeo.com for more information. I love it. Get your tickets, (laughs) get your gear. Uh, to support man definitely go to azrodeo.com also if you do want to buy tickets and you don't want to go online to do it come down to the informant office at 1301 east washington street on the south end of the railroad i mean of the light rail uh we're right here at the arizona informant office again 1301 east washington streets we are open monday through friday mm-hmm. from 9 30 until 4 30 man but we're here late a lot of times working so please come check us out come rock with us AZ Black Rodeo, the hottest show on dirt. Thank you so much, Charlie. Mm,